Hello, welcome to Citizens Forum. It is Wednesday, January the 16th. I'd like to start by thanking the volunteer crew and the Shaw staff that makes this program happen every couple of weeks. Uh, so, my first guest is Robert Conabare. We're going to be talking about uh, the technology of reducing our carbon emissions using transportation. Uh, Robert is a mechanical engineer, worked in the energy industry around the world for 25 years, and uh, Robert believes that carbon reduction and even elimination is not only essential but feasible, and we're going to be talking about that in respect with, of something I'd never really heard of, which is the plug-in hybrid vehicle. So welcome. Thank you. You know, I got started in this uh, maybe f six, eight years ago uh, seriously about uh, looking at where carbon dioxide came from and what we could do to actually uh, uh, reduce it because I, I knew it was a problem and, and convinced, although not everyone is, that it is a problem. So uh, I looked at all the forms uh, of uh, of energy that we use that produce the carbon. And, and all of the carbon comes from energy. So, uh, and there are basically three sources of it. One is uh, uh, from our transportation, our vehicles, and uh, the other is from production of electricity, and then for heating in many ways. And so, and each of these uh, are used differently. So, how to recognize how to change it a little bit, or a whole bunch, uh, you, you need to know how it works. Yeah. And, uh, so you came, uh, well, you got into the plug-in hybrid vehicles. Yeah, that's what, uh, on, the, on the transportation, I looked at, uh, you know, when I started looking at it, the electric vehicle was, was being pushed, okay. as being the answer to, to uh, carbon dioxide from uh, in vehicle transport. And it wasn't working because uh, if you look at the consumption of fuel, uh, uh, of gasoline and diesel, it hasn't changed. <laughs> yeah. So maybe you can tell people how the plug-in hybrid works because I'd never really heard of it. Okay, uh, a plug-in hybrid has a, an engine. A gasoline uh, engine. A gasoline or a diesel, or a diesel engine yeah. and an electric motor. Now the electric motor, uh, is used for starts, basically, and, uh, and acceleration, because that's where it's most efficient. And the electric motor, uh, it's efficient anyway, because uh, in the 90% range. So, uh, and at, high, at really low speed, it has high torque, which means that you can get away from your stops really quickly. And it's also used to, uh, as a generator, if you, the vehicle's slowing down, it can generate electricity. So, so the plug-in hybrid has a gasoline engine or a diesel engine. Yep. It has an electric motor. Yes, and a battery. And a battery. Right. Right. So, uh, in the city, in your in your report, it was solution to pollution. Um, in the city, the car would run mostly on the battery. Yes, that was correct. In fact, yeah. Okay. Uh, and ideally, it would run totally on on the battery. Right. It has the option, of course, of running the engine if you run out of, uh, of, of battery capacity. But that's it. So you're not limited that. by you're, as an electric vehicle is limited in range. Right. This vehicle isn't. That's correct. Because it has a gasoline engine or a diesel engine right. as well. You know, the backup sort of thing is the gasoline engine, and, uh, and it can. It's usually a smaller engine than uh, than a normal car sort of thing because you don't need that extra power for acceleration where the the electric motor takes over these things so uh, uh, and the range on it is probably in the neighborhood of six eight hundred to a thousand kilometers on a, on on the engine alone. and then all you have to do is stop at a gas station and get more gas exactly yeah. so right. there is no there is right. no range right. limitation but how this differs from the regular hybrid is you plug it in and you have a battery that actually runs the car. Right. With a regular hybrid, it's moving back and forth between right. the battery and the gasoline or, or diesel motor. But with the plug-in hybrid, in the city, hopefully, 
it would run virtually always just on its battery. So you've right. got an electric car, right. but without the limitations. Yeah, that's exactly right. But the battery is much smaller, of course. Uh, than it would uh, be in an all-electric car. Than it would car. be in an electric car. And that's one of the advantages, of course, to, and the problems with the electric cars because the battery is expensive. And, of course, that bangs the price up a lot on electric cars and makes its purchase a lot, lots uh, less you throw in some remarkable numbers here. If, if these cars could be built, right? Had we started when you got interested, yeah. let's say eight or ten years ago, and had we started building these kinds of cars, the amount of uh, fuel and carbon we'd be producing would be remarkably reduced. I mean, it's, it's kind of amazing okay. given the numbers you show here. Well, that's right. And, uh, and they have been produced for quite a while, actually. I think probably in the five, six-year range, uh, you know, the hybrid's been around for 15 years. Uh, and, and these, uh, of course, have been pr produced, but they're produced in very small numbers, and uh, most people don't know about them. <laughs> well, that's exactly the problem. So, but they uh, seem to have the benefit of the electric right. and the benefit of the hybrid and removing a lot of costs, the right. costs of the all-gas or all-diesel. Right. I, mean, I mean, I know nothing, but when I looked at this, I thought, Given the numbers you show, I thought, yeah, why didn't, why haven't we been doing this? And yeah. that's the question: Why haven't we been doing it? Well, that's my question too, and that's why I produce this because I think, uh, uh, and hopefully, it explains uh, um, what the advantages are of the plug-in hybrid and uh, how much you can save through the use. Because uh, so, a best case scenario, I mean, you're talking about a fuel reduction of. 80 percent right so if i have a car right now and i switch to a plug-in hybrid a right. small one right. um i'm talking about a fuel saving of 80 percent yes yeah i mean it's it's kind of and, and there's no limitation on where i can go because i can get more gas right yep. so exactly. it's just like having a gas a gas powered car right. but you're running a lot of the time on the battery which is plug-in, right. but it's small, but it's enough to get you around the city. Yeah, well, what, how you use it, it depends on how you drive, basically. And uh, so if you can get the battery system to the size that takes care of all your city driving and let your engine take care of the, the, of the country driving, it's, it works out really well. Now, every manufacturer makes a different type of, of plug-in hybrid. And, and some of them save a lot more fuel than others. And, uh, and the range, actually, I have from 60 to 90% savings on, on, on fuel, depending on your driving cycle and the, and the type of vehicle that you do uh, end up purchasing. And there's quite a few of them on the market today. So, so for a person who drives to work every day, and then maybe drives the kids around a bit, right. and maybe you know goes shopping a bit. So in a day, let's say 15 miles to work, 15 miles back is 30, and maybe another 30 on top of that. Okay, right. so you can say that you would be running on the battery for 50 of those 60 miles, or 45 of right. those 60 miles, yeah. and there's no limitation because then your gasoline engine cuts in and away you go. Right. And when you get home at night, can you just plug it into a regular? You can, or you can you can uh, purchase a, a faster charge, uh, you know, off the two volt or two forty volt uh, system, and that charges well, it faster. But and those cost a couple of thousand bucks, I think. And yeah, yeah. But if you don't right. want that, you can just plug it into your right. regular outlet, and away right. you go. It just takes longer to charge. Would it charge overnight? Yeah. And every manufacturer makes it a little bit different. Uh, plug-in times and charge times. And In general, would they charge overnight? For oh yeah, yeah. yeah, no problem. Yeah. So, and the advantage of that is, is that you don't need charge stations. We spend an awful lot of money on char public charge stations. Yes, so you and, don't need that. And you don't need that, and that's the problem with electric vehicles. I mean, I, you know, the numbers, the numbers you run here are, uh, I don't know if you want to talk about any of them, but... Yeah, it's, uh, it, if, uh, 
You know, this, this little booklet is, is based on Canada and the U.S. separately. Um, uh, if they went, when they go to plug-in hybrids, how much fuel you save. <laughs> And it's astronomical, actually. It's huge. Uh, Can you throw out a number of uh, astronomical? You know, in Canada, we would save in the neighborhood of seventy billion dollars a year. Seventy billion dollars. Billion dollars a year. How would we save seventy billion dollars a year? If you take, uh, you know, we use uh, sixty billion liters of fuel a year in Canada, of gasoline and and diesel, and then eighty percent reduction or 88 percent reduction I say that you can you can get uh, with a combination of plug-in hybrids and electric vehicles you save 88 percent of so you're saying you would give me that number in billions again <laughs> how many billions would we save of what liters no of dollars dollars over over 70 billion okay and let's say you're way over let's say it's only 50 billion is there anything wrong with 50 billion Nothing. so that's the answer that's why we don't have it Nothing. that's right oh my god so this is yeah. it saves a lot of people an awful lot of money in in terms of the cars will last longer yes cars will last longer. now there are problems with battery production i mean it seems to be as dirty a technology as everything else right and we'll still have to be building cars. Can cars be refitted in some way? Or is that not possible? Uh, like if I, if I have a regular car, can that be changed into a, uh, a, uh, a plug-in hybrid? Uh, at the moment, I find no, no, no uh, uh, ability to do that. But, yeah. but I, I see that as a probability, actually, for the future. And uh, there are some trucks now that uh, are being made that way. Um, but it's by a, a third party. It's not by a manufacturer. So uh, so th this is possible, but uh, uh, it's down the road with that one. So. Just run through uh, that number again of uh, six. Well, over... Over $70 billion a year saving. And this is only in the transportation sector. Just the transportation. And that's why I've focused on the transportation sector, yeah. actually, because it saves us so much money. And yeah. are there, uh, let's say I'm buying a twenty-five or $30,000, let us say I'm buying a $30,000 car. Right. If it was a plug-in hybrid, how much would it cost? Would it cost more? Well, uh, the most recent ones, the, uh, the 2019, uh, the MSRP price is, is about $30,000. And of course... So that's comparable to a lot of stuff? Yeah, but when you add in all the... All the I don't know what their add-ins are, right. <laughs> actually, but, uh, right, exactly. but yeah, it's, it's about comparable. But they, are, they will cost more, I'm sure. And, uh, but you're going to be saving 50% of your gas bill yeah, to start exactly. with. And, uh, and, the, and here in BC, we have an ideal situation uh, to really incorporate this and, and get it moving because we already have a rebate system for vehicles that, that uh, are battery powered. Yes. We're there, but Robert, I'm afraid we're out of time. This just seems like an idea whose time not only has come, but came a long time ago. And we, ha you know, people like me, the regular people, haven't even heard of it, I don't think. So let's hope something positive happens. Thank you very much. Thank you. And let's yeah. hope we can make it happen. And that's another story. Mm. We can make it happen, but <laughs> it's up to us. Thank you for watching this segment of Citizens Morning. <laughs>